Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my top 20 perfumes of 2020 and I don't want this to be confused with 20 perfumes for life. As I've told you guys before, I find it very very difficult to narrow down my collection to 10 or 20 perfumes for life. I just can't do it. I love each of them so much individually and there's very very few that I would want to be without. So this is kind of like my top 20 favorite perfumes for this year. They're either ones that I love for one reason or another more than a lot of my other ones or they're some of my best discoveries of the year. So you'll probably find that there's a couple in this list that aren't like necessarily the best perfumes ever, but for one reason or another, they made it on their way to my top 20. So I'll get into those reasons a little bit more as we get into the video. If you haven't already subscribed, I would absolutely love if you would head on down and hit the subscribe button. Make sure that your notification bell is turned on so you don't miss any of my uploads. On this channel, we talk mostly about perfumes, but we also do a little bit of minimalism, home decor, and sometimes fashion and lifestyle. So if that's your thing, make sure to head on down and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get started okay so number one on our list is lovely from Sarah Jessica Parker and if you guys know me you probably guessed that this would be on my list this is one of my absolute favorite fragrances I wear this one to bed most of the time and you can see how much love I've given it because I probably have a bigger dent in this bottle than any other bottle in my collection and this is just a really soft easy to wear musky fragrance there's also a little bit of lavender in here so I think that's probably why I enjoy wearing it to bed because the lavender really just soothes me to sleep and I just find this to be such a pretty, lovely, easy to wear scent. I don't really know how to describe it other than it just relaxes me and it's a great bedtime fragrance. It's also good for just everyday wear, but I find the longevity isn't great. So that's why I like to use it for bed. So that is number one on my list. Number two on my list is Princess by Killian. And this is one that's actually fairly new to my collection and it's one that actually had to grow on me. So if you watch my channel, you know that when I first smelled this one, I wasn't really impressed with it just because I wasn't head over heels with the scent itself to begin with, which is unbelievable because now I really really like it um, but also I wasn't impressed with the performance of this one and I think it must have just been a bad day because the second and third time that I tried wearing this one I fell head over heels for it. It's now one of my favorite smells in my entire collection. This is a tea and marshmallow scent and it's just very feminine and very soft and powdery and enveloping and kind of sensual and it's just a beautiful marshmallow scent so one of my absolute favorites and I do find that if I spray this in certain places underneath my shirt as well as on top of my clothing and on my skin it does last a decent amount of time so yeah like I say I think that first time I tried this must have just been a fluke and it has now become one of my favorites in my collection the next one is an oldie but a goodie and I had to include it because this is one of my all-time favorite perfumes this is Miss Dior from Christian Dior and this is just the Eau de Parfum so I would like to actually get my hands on the Le Parfum, which is the stronger version of this one. I see that it is available on some discount sites, so I'm kind of tempted to blind buy a bottle because I'm sure I would love it. Um, but this is just a beautiful, classy orange rose patchouli scent, and it's just one of my absolute favorites of all time. I think it's so classy, so pretty, such a good dumb reach. I don't wear it a lot anymore these days. I did put a decent dent in it, but I don't wear it much anymore these days because I have so many other perfumes. And this one just tends to kind of sit in the back, but I will bring it out and wear it again. It's consistently been on my top 10 for life. That is number three, or is it? Yes, number three, Miss Dior from Christian Dior. Number four in my collection is actually a newer discovery, and this is Chloe Nomad or Chloe Nomad. So this is an absolutely beautiful citrusy oak mossy scent. It has a touch of a masculine vibe, and I always tell you guys it reminds me a little bit of like shaving cream or like barbershop vibes. I don't know what it is about it, but I just absolutely love it. It has like a freshness to it, and yet it has an earthiness to it, and there's a touch of a sweetness to it because of the um, fruity note that's in the opening and it's just like one of those addictive smells that I can just keep coming up to the bottle and smelling it all day continuously. I just really, really like it. This is just a beautiful, easy to wear fragrance. I haven't worn it much because I did just get it and it is the middle of winter, but come summertime and like hot weather, I can't wait to wear this perfume. So I'm going to be super unoriginal here and talk about my next favorite one, which is Alien from Mugler. This one was actually one that had to grow on me. I did not like this at all when I first smelt it. Actually, I was repulsed by it. It was one that I wanted to wash off of myself as soon as possible. And after I gave it a chance and wore it for a date night, it completely changed for me and I saw it in a different light and it smelt totally different to me for some reason. And now it's just 
To me, it's like the most intoxicating, sexy, boss woman fragrance in the world. I always have to bring it to my nose and smell it in my videos. I love it so much. This is a beautiful jasmine, amber, and woodsy note fragrance, and it's very bold. I actually have the Eau de Toilette coming. I'm very excited about that. I'll share it with you when it comes, but I'm just so obsessed with this scent. I feel like I could wear it all the time every day, and certainly if I could only keep like five or 10 perfumes, this would definitely be one of those perfumes. So the next one is probably not gonna come as a surprise to many of you. This is Baccarat Rouge 540 from Maison Francis Kirk John. And this one actually surprises me that I'm even including in a top 20 because when this first came out, again, I was not wowed by this fragrance. I was a little bit underwhelmed because so many people had hyped it up so much and I was just expecting it to be like, mind-blowing like volcano going off and it did not have that effect for me at all this one again was an acquired taste it was one that i had to keep coming back and smelling and the more i came back and smelt it the more i had an appreciation for it it's very luminous and very classy and it smells expensive and it just makes me feel extremely put together when i wear it so i haven't been wearing it a whole lot lately because it is very expensive and i don't want to waste it just wearing it around the house but as soon as lockdown is over. I can't wait to wear this out and about a little bit more often. So yeah, that is the next one on my list, Baccarat Rouge 540. The next one on my list, you guys, this is truly one of my favorite, favorite, favorite perfumes. Like if I could only pick 10 for life, I think this would definitely be on my top 10. And this is Mont Guerlain Floral. So if you watch my channel, you probably know I have Mont Guerlain Eau de Parfum, like the original one, and I also have Mont Guerlain Intense. This one is my favorite. Out of all of them, I like this even better than the original. And the reason for that is that this is a little bit brighter and a little bit sweeter than the original. I love the original, but um, sometimes I find the original to be almost a little bit too heavy, especially for like spring, summer, daytime, not that I've had this for that long. Um, but I just don't tend to grab for the original a lot when it's warmer. This one is so sparkling. It's like a sparkling, brighter, sweeter version of the original Mont Guerlain, and I just love it. It's so classy. It's so pretty. It's like the perfect mix of a floral fragrance and vanilla and lavender, and it's just beautiful. It's elegant. It's sweet. This is a must sniff for me. Like This is one of my top, top, top recommendations. So yeah, that is Mont Guerlain Floral. Okay, and this next one is newer to my collection as well. This is a more recent discovery, and I absolutely love this. My boyfriend also loves this. This is just good, good, good all the way around. This is Van Cleef & Arpels Bois Doré. This is essentially a tobacco and vanilla scent, but it's a very unique tobacco and vanilla. They've included a note of mineral notes in here, which I've told you guys, I don't know what mineral notes smell like, but to me, it kind of smells metallic and cold. That's probably the best way I can describe it. It just gives it like this metallic cold vibe so it's not like a warm and cozy tobacco vanilla it's a very sexy um like cold mineral-esque kind of a tobacco vanilla it's hard for me to describe it's just very unique i could not have possibly imagined what this would smell like based on the notes you just really have to smell it for yourself and it's totally intoxicating it smells so good um, my boyfriend sprayed this on his skin the other night and I smelt it and I was obsessed. Like I could rub my nose in his skin with this on it for hours and hours. And this is totally unisex, so a man and a, or a woman could wear this. So this is definitely one of my favorite new discoveries of 2020. Number nine on my list is again, not very original. It's one of my favorites. If you guys watch my channel, you know that this has been one of my favorites for a really long time. This is Olympia from Paco Rabanne. This is a salty vanilla scent. I don't have to spend too much time talking about it because I think this one is pretty popular popular all over the fragrance community. Um, but to me, this is just a very sexy, versatile fragrance. I like it for day. I like it for night. It has pretty good performance. This is my favorite out of all of the Olympias. I also have the Intense, and I do prefer this one. So again, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but this has to be on my list because this has consistently been one of my favorite fragrances for the whole year. So the next one is actually a little bit surprising. This is Ariana Grande REM. This has become one of my favorite, most reached for fragrances. So as you can see, there's not a huge dent, but I do have a lot of perfume. So the fact that I've even put a dent in this at all is impressive. Um, so this is essentially a lavender and salty, slightly gourmand scent, and it almost has like a bit of a lavender dryer sheet vibe, but it's got a little bit of a salty accord, which makes it kind of sexy, and it also has a bit of a gourmand touch. This is actually the only Ariana Grande fragrance that I have in my collection. Um, this is my favorite one that she's come out with, 
And for me, I just love wearing this for like Netflix and chill, cuddling up on the couch, intimate occasions, bedroom occasions. Um, I just, I absolutely love it, which really surprised me because when I first smelt it, I wasn't in love. But yeah, this is one of my favorite from 2020. So the next one in this absolutely beautiful bottle is Chloe Absolute de Parfum. Again, this is the only Chloe fragrance I have. This is my favorite Chloe. Um, this one, if you haven't smelt it, is it still smells like the original Chloe. It has a little bit of that Chloe kind of a vibe or DNA, but this one also has um, vanilla and patchouli. So this is rose, vanilla, and patchouli essentially. And it smells like a rosy vanilla soap. It smells like a very classy, pretty rosy vanilla soap super feminine super simple but at the same time always a compliment getter um, makes me feel very sophisticated makes me feel very put together it's just like my favorite grab and go perfume for summertime if i just want to smell classy put together elegant and don't want to put too much thought or too much fuss into a perfume it's interesting to me because it's a far cry from so many of my other perfumes it's the only like truly rose floral fragrance that I have. Um, all of my other rose fragrances tend to be quite sweet or quite oriental. This is the only like true soapy, clean, fresh kind of a rose scent that I have. So next we have one from Chanel. And of course I have to have Chanel in here because I love Chanel. This is Chanel Chance Eau de Parfum. So I also love the Eau de Toilette, but the reason I picked this one is because this one has incredible performance. So if you haven't smelled this, this is kind of a powdery floral scent. And I think there's also a little bit of vanilla in here. There is patchouli. This is actually a really difficult fragrance to describe because the notes don't do it justice. It smells so good. It is so classy. It is so upscale and sophisticated. It has like a sexiness to it. To me, it smells like a sexy rich girl, like um, a very sexy, sophisticated boss woman kind of a girl. This would make a great career scent, like a great everyday signature scent, good for the office, but you could also just wear this going shopping. It's just a super versatile, beautiful, beautiful scent. And it's one of my favorites. This is in top 10 for life. This is probably in my top five for life. And this is my favorite Chanel fragrance of all time as well. So the next one we have is Delina Exclusive from Parfum de Marly. So this shouldn't be very surprising either. Delina has been all the rage for the last couple of years in the fragrance community. And I actually used to have the original Delina. This one is my favorite one though. This is the one that I prefer. This is just a little bit more of a creamy vanillic kind of a rose scent versus the tart fruity one that the original Delina was. So for me, this one is just so beautiful and unique. I've never smelled any rose scent quite like this. I don't have any other fragrance quite like this in general. This has incense in it. It has woody notes. Nine times out of 10, somebody will tell me I smell good when I wear this. It has great projection, great performance. The bottle is beautiful. It was worth every penny. I did get this one from a discount site. So I do recommend if you would like Delina or Delina exclusive, it is 100% legit. Get it from a discount site. Um, I think I got this one from fragrancebuy.ca. A little bit expensive but I'm so so happy to have it for my collection and it also makes beautiful decor as well okay so the next one on my list and I wouldn't be being honest if I didn't include this one like I say this is an example of one of those perfumes that is not the best perfume of 2020 by any means like it's not one of the best perfumes in my collection. I'm sure I have much, much better perfumes by many people's standards, but I have to include this because you guys know this is one of my most reached for scents for certain occasions and certain date nights. Um, this has a reputation for being very well liked by a lot of men. It's a very sexy, sweet, caramel perfume. I also really just like the way this smells myself. Like out of all the Viva La Juicies, this is my favorite Viva La Juicy. And it's just an easy, dumb reach. If I wanna smell sweet, if I wanna smell flirtation, if I'm having a date with my boyfriend, not like going out to a fancy restaurant, but like a date in and I don't know what to wear. This is one of the ones I grab for without even thinking about it because I know that he enjoys it and it does make me feel a little bit more sexy because it is just such a sweet flirtatious perfume. So not very elegant, but this is still one that I do tend to reach for on a regular basis. So I have to include it in my list. So up next we have Roses Vini from Mansara and this has become so widely talked about on the fragrance community. When I first got this, I didn't hear that many people talking about it and now it seems like every other person absolutely loves this fragrance so it has just completely blown up. This is a very sugary, sweet, syrupy, rich vanilla rose scent. It's not super heavy on the rose so if you're not a rose lover I would still definitely suggest checking this out. It also has like a bit of a woodiness to it. It's got like a depth to it 
It's just rich and intoxicating and it has incredible performance. It never leaves your skin. It never leaves your clothing. You only need one or two sprays of this literally. Um, so I've had it for quite a while and it looks like I've hardly touched it, but I've actually worn it a couple of times. This actually bears some resemblance to Montal Intense Cafe. And I actually prefer this to Intense Cafe, but I am kind of tempted to go back and revisit it because um, it's been a while and I think my tastes have just evolved and I think I might really, really like Intense Cafe now. So if you like Intense Cafe, I would definitely recommend checking this out. So we're closing in on the final five and in the fifth last spot, we have La Nuit Tresor à la Folie from Lancome. So I used to have the original uh, La Nuit Tresor and I really liked it and I decluttered it. And I don't know what I was thinking when I decluttered it because I recently smelt it again and I was like, what was I thinking? That was such a beautiful perfume. But anyways, I now have the um, La Nuit Tresor à la Folie and I love this one. This one I do prefer over the original. This is just an absolutely gorgeous, sweet, pink smelling vanilla perfume. This has really, really good performance, you guys. I don't need very many sprays of this at all on my skin and on my clothing and it projects really, really well and it lasts all night long and I get compliments on this. So this is one of those perfumes that I consider a 10, like a 10 out of 10. Smells great, great performance, super sexy, super feminine, and it pretty much smells like it looks. It smells like a deep, dark, pink, sexy vanilla perfume. It's just beautiful. Um, lots of different notes in there. It's very gourmand and yeah, I just love it. And in my fourth last spot, we have Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb. So again, I'm being super cliche, but I had to include this one in my collection because this is one of my favorite for going on six years now. I love this scent. This is just a beautiful, sweet floral scent. Some people find it to be too sweet. I don't find it to be too sweet. I must have a really high sweet tolerance because to me, this one is almost a little bit spicy. Like it almost has like a interesting, like like spicy twist, but it's just beautiful. It's elegant, it's sexy, it's sweet, it's feminine. It works for every occasion. I don't care that it's old. I don't care that a million people wear it. Yes, you can pick this out of a crowd. Like if you smell somebody wearing this, you're gonna know what it is. It's not super unique, but I absolutely love it. And it just remains still one of my favorite, favorite go-to perfumes for a date. It gets me tons of compliments. My boyfriend absolutely loves it. It's just a very sexy, flirtatious, sweet, feminine perfume. So in my third last spot, we have Nishane Annie. And this is one of my favorite new niche vanillas. I absolutely love this. This one I purchased blindly based on um, Emmy's World of Fragrance. She had said that this was her favorite vanilla and I love vanilla scents. And this is a really unique and bold fragrance. This has amazing lasting power. It just lasts forever. It has really good sillage, really good projection. And this is a very unique vanilla because this has both fresh and warm spicy notes in it. So if you don't like a fresh or a spicy perfume, um, you won't like this. This has bergamot and ginger. It also has cardamom. So it does have like a little bit of a unique spicy punch in the opening and then it slowly starts to dry down and it becomes this absolutely intoxicating gourmand vanilla with a woody undertone. It's difficult to explain. It's so unique. It's so beautiful. This is one that when I get it on my skin, I just keep going back and smelling that spot over and over and over because it smells so good. It's so intoxicating. I just love it. So yeah, this one definitely had to be on my list. It is one of my best discoveries of 2020 for sure. So excuse my voice, you guys. It's starting to get a little bit raspy here because I've been talking for a while now, but the second last one on my list is Livia Bell Intensement. And this has become my new favorite Livia Bell flanker of all time. I like the original one. I have the Livia Bell Eclat, which I really like. And I also have Livia Bell Intense. This one for me beats out all of them. This one for me has that signature, like no fail, um, Livia Bell DNA, but it's not quite so heavy on like the powdery notes. It's not quite so heavy on the patchouli. This one also has, um, a beautiful, sweet raspberry note. So this is like a super sweet gourmandy version of the original Livia Bell. And yet it's still a little bit complex. It's just a beautiful, sweet, sexy, easy to wear, easy to go to. Like this one for me is almost right up there with Flower Bomb in terms of I would wear this for so many occasions. I would wear this easily for a date. And to me, this just is almost like the perfect perfume. It's almost the perfect sweet feminine perfume. And you guys, I did save the best for last. So my favorite new discovery of 2020, one of my favorite, favorite new perfumes of all time is Alien Essence Absolute. And every time I show this bottle, inevitably somebody comments and says, 
hmm, that looks like it could be a fake or that doesn't look like it's the right bottle. So I always have to do a disclaimer, no, this is not the Alien Essence Absolute bottle. This is a bottle that I purchased on Amazon for about $6 because I don't have an original Essence Absolute bottle. All I had was a refill, so I needed a bottle to put it into. Alien Essence Absolute is discontinued, as many of you guys know. Um, so yeah, I needed a bottle to put it in and I just picked this one up and I actually really like it. So this is an absolutely beautiful, sensual, cozy, cashmere, vanillic version of the original Alien. Even if you don't like the original Alien, I think there's a chance you might still like this one because it's just a beautiful, oriental, sexy, cashmere kind of a scent. I've only seen a handful of people who don't really care for this. I find it completely intoxicating. It has such good lasting power. The dry down is beautiful. I just... I can't say enough good things about this. Um, so I actually have this one and I also have a backup bottle. And if you're interested in getting a bottle of Alien Essence Absolute, you have to go on the discount fragrance websites and you have to put your name on a waiting list. Um, and they will email you. And I have been successful twice now. I've woken up in the morning, had an email that said it was back in stock and I purchased it right away and I was successful both times. So you can get it and you can get it for a good price. You just have to keep your eye open and you have to put your name on the um, email waiting list. So yeah, this one I got from fragrancebuy.ca and yeah, this is easily my favorite, favorite, favorite new discovery of 2020. So that's it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed seeing what my top 20 of the year were. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. And if you wouldn't mind, tell me what your favorite one or two or 20, if you want, <laughs> favorite perfumes for the year were. And also, if you haven't already, feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram, where I share a lot of other little details about my life that I don't usually share here on YouTube. And I will see you guys all next time. Bye for now.